Good evening and welcome to the College Boulevard Activities Complex in Olathe. Tonight's High V High School Game of the Week. Regional 6A state football playoff action as you've got the seventh seed of Blue Valley taking on the two seed of Olathe West. Hi everybody, Kevin Weig, Johnny Beck, Leon Liebel, your announcers for the High V High School Game of the Week. Well, both teams advance to the second round, but tonight they'll take on the weather. This game got moved up a day because they're expecting rain tomorrow and thunder showers. But tonight, Johnny, they got to deal with the wind out of the south and very strong and handling mistakes. It seems like these teams are pretty even, but the team with the less mistakes usually wins these playoff games. Yeah, the, the passing game's obviously going to be really tough tonight. So both teams are going to have to play physical in the run game, both sides of the ball. And then obviously field position is going to be a big thing. Special teams, punts, kickoffs. So both teams are going to have to play smart football. And like you said, Kevin, after going to play basically scot-free. Time now for the high B player profile. Running the football for Blue Valley is John Price. And this is a guy who's getting a lot of D1 attention. Uh, and the reason being, the guy's averaging over seven yards per carry, 12 touchdowns. I mean, he's a home run hitter every time he catches the ball or carries the ball. He's electric, and on the Olathe West side of things, their Mike linebacker trying to stop him, Cooper Novacek. And he's their leading tackle, 90 tackles on the year, averages 10 tackles a game. Again, he's going to have to lead a physical defense tonight to stop this Blue Valley running game. Olathe West playing host to Blue Valley, the first ever meeting between these two schools. It's a playoff game. It's the High V High School Game of the Week, and we're back with the opening kickoff right after this. Warm and windy night here in Olathe as you take a look at the uh, November moon as temperatures uh, in the upper 60s, but the wind's strong out of the south around 20 to 25 miles an hour here at Seaback in Olathe. Let's go down on the field now with our opening coin toss with the referee tonight, Kyle Summer, in charge. Blue Valley coming in at five and four, the seven seed taking on the two seed of Olathe West, winners of six in a row. They are seven and two. Going over some guidelines for the game is the referee tonight. Captains on the field. Big coin toss. Do you want to play with the wind or against the wind? Will be the decision as there's the coin flip. This is kind of a open stadium, so the wind kind of howls through across the Kansas Prairie. Olathe West has won a toss, has elected to receive. So Olathe West will take the football as they won the coin toss. You see, uh, Johnny, uh, uh, a lot of open space for that uh, strong south wind we have tonight. As we send it down to our sideline reporter, here's Leon Liebel. Well, Kevin, 72 playoff games in nine classes are being played in the state of Kansas this week. 19 of those games are being played tonight. Now, several of them were already on the schedule for Thursday, but most of them were moved to tonight because of the threat of severe weather tomorrow, thunderstorms, lightning, heavy rain, including tonight's game, of course, with here at Olathe West against Blue Valley. Now, both coaches told me before the game, yeah, they would have loved to have an extra day of preparation, but, you know, they found out Tuesday's game is going to be changed. They said both teams are in the same boat. Rather play in nicer conditions tonight. But that wind, as you mentioned several times, that could be a big factor down here. Kevin and Johnny, let's have a good one. All right, thanks, Leon. There is Alan Terrell, the head coach of Blue Valley in his sixth year, former Turner head coach. Was an assistant under uh, Coach Rampy for five years as an O-line coach. His team five and four, and 40-year-old T.J. O'Neill in his fifth year, 30 and 20 his record, and a uh, guy that played against Blue Valley back in his high school days in a state championship game, lost in triple overtime as a Salina Central player as the quarterback in Manhattan. It 
KSU Stadium as we see the wind effect there. Ball blown off the tee. Blue Valley going to have the wind at their back here in the first quarter. McGuire Richmond, sophomore, outstanding linebacker, but also a very good kicker as well. Kicking away. And the ball will be returned from the five-yard line by Olathe West. And a good return to start the game. It's breaking down the sideline. And that'll be Elijah Hakeem with a big-time return. Cross midfield, short field now for Olathe West. Yeah, and you see the guys in blue just being able to stay with their blockers long enough. See the returner doing a good job of just hitting the seam and getting upfield, not trying to do too much side to side there. Great field position to start the game here for Olathe West. As it goes 56 yards on the kickoff return for Hakeem, who's their uh, starting wide receiver along with Jack Scott. Mason McGavern is the quarterback. He is the senior, second team all league last year. Vincent Gatchett is their top running back. The strength of this team is their O-line. Four of the five starters return and they've went to more of a power look, two tight end, 12 personnel look as they scrimmage first and 10. And this is Gatchett making his way just inside the 35. The guy who kicked off Richmond, the Will linebacker, the leading tackler for Blue Valley making the stop as you take a look at the senior McGavern's numbers. Johnny, he's a good runner of the football. He's nearly got a thousand rushing yards this year. Yeah, and we covered this team last year in the state playoffs and he had a couple big runs, so we know he's capable of breaking off a couple tonight. Gatchet, first down and more as he's inside the 25. Gatchet has over a thousand yards. He's at a thousand thirty-five coming in. And he runs for a first down for the Owls. Yeah, and he's filling, you know, the shoes of Anthony Favro, who left last year, and he was school leader, rushing yards and all that good stuff. And his kids come in and really filled the void. Favreau a walk on at Mizzou. Flags as the ball is snapped. Neutral zone infraction, number 22, defense, five-yard penalty, first down. It's on the outside linebacker, number 22 is Braden and Jewel. And he's just lined up in the neutral zone to make sure that quarterback keeping on the read option. And the ball may have come out at the end there. Blue Valley saying they have it. The official pointing to the ground saying the ball was dead. No fumble. And it'll be a second down and short. McGavern averaging 6.9 yards per carry. Let's take another look. Ball is ripped out. The ball is loose before he hits the turf, it looks like. And Blue Valley came up with that. Lonergan, the safety, had it, but officials disagreed, said he was down. And the quarterback keeping again. And McGavern, he's a big guy, Johnny. This guy is uh, six foot 205. He's a hard tackle for this defense. Yeah, and he's got the speed to be able to break off the big runs, but he's also powerful enough in between those tackles, almost like a fullback H-back running the football. Well, he got it a first and goal now. First drive of the game, and here's Gatchet. And Gatchet with a nice run. And as Gatchet is... One of these guys, they say, is just a program kid. He was small and slow as a freshman. He worked hard, now he's the starting running back. And this time, it'll be the quarterback on the read option, and he is stuffed on the play. Looks like Robert Marshall was there. Once again, Jason Burrows, their Mike linebacker, third leading tackler, out tonight with an injury. So Austin Cornett will get time. There you take a look at Njul, the outside linebacker. Owen Reiner is out with a broken arm. He suffered in practice this week, so they're uh, short a couple of linebackers. And now trying to run for it on third down and gold, and they are shut down on the play, and that's Lonergan making the stop and a little shaken up on the play is Anthony. And now it's fourth and gold as he tries to walk it off. This guy leads the team... Uh, 
Well, no, he's second on the team, I beg your pardon, in interceptions. Marshall has five, Lonergan has four, and he's gonna walk it off and stay on the field, it looks like. And no kicker coming out, so they're gonna go for it here. Fourth and goal from the three yard line, pistol formation. And two players moving at the same time, so illegal procedure on the offense. And we'll probably see a kick now as that'll back him up five yards. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. So we'll go back to the eight yard line and I don't see a kicker running out there. Yeah, the late the West came out with trips on the left side. And looks like they were trying to disguise something there, just not able to get set before the ball was snapped. And Kev, like you said, it looks like they're going to go for it. Once again, they're working against that strong south wind, so trying to get some points early on. Fourth down and goal from the eight-yard line. Play action, pass to the back of the end zone, incomplete. As they were looking for Jack Scott, and it's wide, and the defense holds. Michael Andre, the cornerback with the coverage, and the ball goes over on downs to Blue Valley. They'll take over deep in their own territory. Yeah, huge stop there for the Blue Valley defense. Kick return. Getting deep into the Blue Valley territory, but the defense able to step up. Forced the turnover on downs. Trevor Brush is the quarterback for Blue Valley. He's a senior. 51% passer, not much of a rusher. John Price is their big star, the running back number 23. Their tight end's good, and Samuel, their top wide receiver is Andre Davis. He's headed to Kansas State. He wears number 18. He's a big wide receiver. And here's Price fighting through, breaking a tackle, still fighting, and finally ridden down on the play. As uh, like uh, Reese Russman was there. And John Price, the transfer from Lincoln Prep. Only got one yard on the play. Yeah, it looked like the initial contact was right there at the line of scrimmage. And yeah, Mallory kind of tackled him and then kind of threw him and he's able to keep his balance. All that running for only one yard, second down and nine now for the Tigers. And here's Price again, not much doing. Giving props to the D-line for this Olathe West squad. Saying that Abels and McLaughlin doing a good job. They play a 4-2-5. Craig Gorl, the fifth-year defensive coordinator, is in charge. Giving up 28 points per game. Had 11 takeaways. As it's now third down and seven for the Tigers. First drive of the game. They have the wind at their back. So passing shouldn't be a problem. As Rush rolling, throwing, and finding Andre Davis, the young man headed to Kansas State. He'll run out of bounds with a first down catch at the 29-yard line. This guy, Johnny, 6'4", 205. He looks like a Division I wide receiver. Yeah, and you see him using his body here, just kind of get the defender. Get enough separation there, and you see him use his hands very well going to get that ball. See why he's a K-State commit right there. Officially spotted at the 28-yard line, first and 10 Tigers, as flags will stop this play. Looked like Davis, who was in motion, took a step towards Ball the line start. of scrimmage there. It's on Blue Valley. It'll be uh, first and 15. Early movement by one of the O linemen. I think the left tackle. Now they go jet sweep with Andre Davis. Andre, short gain. Owl's able to stretch it out. This team runs a pistol spread. They try to keep it 50 50 run to pass. They're averaging 315 yards per game. Average 23 points scored per game. Blue 
Teton Valley, the seventh seed out of the Eastern Kansas League, four and three in the EKL this year. The second down and nine. Brush, again rolling, jump pass, and incomplete right at the feet of Thomas Harold. And it'll be third down and nine. Harold, the senior. Wide receivers are tall. He's 6'2". Davis is 6'4". As we take a look at another look at the little jump pass here by Brush. Yeah, good coverage downfield. So late the West defensive lineman bearing down on Bush right there. And he's just able to get that ball off. Fortunate that ball was not tipped up in the air. So you'll late the West defender. Just kind of reading his eyes the entire throw there. Now third down and long from the 29-yard line. Blue Valley's first drive of the game. Passing with the win. Sideline pass complete. That is Grady Westfall. First down catch, and Grady Westfall, the baseball star, number one pitcher for the Blue Valley Tigers, throws in the 90s, and a first down catch for the sophomore wide receiver. A good route finding the sticks. Understand that you got to get your depth, and that ball's going to bring you back a couple yards. And gets the feet down, secures the ball. Rupsoy with the coverage just across the 40 at the 42 yard line. Trevor Brush, the quarterback, team captain. Say he knows his limits. He's a game prep freak. Football smart swing pass. And this is Grady Westfall, the baseball star. Run out of bounds as he crosses the 45, and that is Justin Longhorn able to take him to the chalk. Good gain on first down, about five or six yards by Westfall. And you see the receivers doing a good job of stock blocking Harold, Dalkey, making sure that they're allowing their teammate to get a good read. And right there, like Kev said, good pickup on first down. Blue Valley known for their baseball stars. Of course, if you're watching the World Series, Ryan Stanick is a relief pitcher for the Houston Astros. Played his college ball at Arkansas, but prepped at Blue Valley High School. Quick pass to the sideline. It's caught. And nice move there by Harold to get away and get a few extra yards inside the 40. That's Thomas Harold, first down catch for Blue Valley. And you see Harold does a good job just catching the ball. He's making the defender miss, picking up good yards after the catch. See right there, the Olympic wow. West defenders just got to go low on those guys. As you talked about, Kevin, these are some big receivers. Can't try and tackle these guys up top. You got to go around the feet. Yards after the catch down to the 38, first and 10. Brush again, firing middle behind his intended target. That time, Ben Dalkey on a little uh, slant in, and it's behind him and incomplete. Well, and if you're going to get some, you know, the passing game going, it's definitely going to have to be going this side of the field or going in this direction. You see Bush, that one just got, just got away from him a little bit. Brush. As a freshman and sophomore, used to drive the coaches crazy. He said uh, he has grown up a lot. He's a team captain now. And he quarterbacks the offense. Play action. Buying time. And now just going to throw this one into his bench area. Incomplete. And it'll be a third down and 10 for the Tigers. Looked like Bush had Andre Davis as he kind of faked the handoff in the open flat, but the Olathe the West defenders did a good job of finding him, and Bush just has to throw that ball away. Bring up third and long here. And again, if you're looking for the go-to guy, Davis is up at the top of your screen. Single coverage. Well, now Brush in the offense yes! with a tough situation. Third down and 10. You're behind the chains. Wind at your back, throwing. Davis comes back, makes the catch, but he's about a yard shy of the first down. Andre Davis headed to K-State. He's been battling a shoulder injury, but they glad to have big number 18 back and in the lineup. He does a great job of coming back to the football. He's just got to get a little bit more depth there. 
Maybe closer to 14 yards and catch it at 12. Looks like they're going to mark him about a yard or a half yard short. Again, when you've got a guy like John Price, you just tell your big boys up front, just get a little bit of a push and see if they can't fall forward and pick up this first down here. Samuel, the tight end, is lined up as a blocker. They're going to throw for it. Swing past John Price, the catch, the turn, the first down, and more using that speed to get out around the corner, and he'll have it down near the 15-yard line. 14 yards gained on fourth down and one. John Price, swing pass, and it's a little dangerous here. He had to kind of turn his body and make a tough catch. Yeah, that's a hard pitch and catch right there. Any quarterback will tell you that's not one that they like to throw a lot, but get John Price the ball in open field. Again, these Blue Valley receivers are doing a good job of Springing the ball carrier, and right there, Price able to get that first down and keep this drive alive. Trevor Brush, senior, quarterback, scrimmaging at the 15, now cut back, and John Price not going to get much there. Novacek there. Also there is Layson Johnson. He's a, a linebacker for this squad, and... Uh, He's the kid that transferred in from Arkansas, move in from Bentonville, Arkansas, before the season. Second down and nine for Blue Valley. Once again, they stopped Olathe West on a fourth and goal play. And now they're driving with the wind at their back, trying to get the first points of the game. Swing pass again, John Price in space. John cutting it up. like uh, Maddox Liker made the stop, the free safety. And now third down. They're still going to need six yards. John Price getting Division I looks from Power 5 teams. Averaging 7.6 yards per carry. He's also a pretty good receiver. Now has 10 catches on the year. Brush to the end zone, has his tight end for the touchdown. Gatlin Samuel in the back of the end zone with his fifth receiving touchdown of the year. And Blue Valley on their first drive gets a touchdown pass to their tight end, Gatlin Samuel. Well, they run Price in the flat again, and it looked like some of those Olathe the West defenders kind of cheated up. And Bush doing a good job of keeping his eyes downfield. Able to complete that pass to the tight end. Samuel, what a heck of a catch, understanding where he was at on the back of the end zone. Able to haul that ball in and stay in bounds. Richmond, the PAT, and he got it. 95-yard drive with a touchdown pass, capping it to the tight end, Gatlin Samuel. As you take a look at some of the highlights, Andre Davis with the big catch. And, uh, that was uh, Westfall. Here's Grady again with a nice catch. Here's the conversion on fourth down, though, Johnny. That was a big play. And then here's the tight end going to get it in the back of the end zone. Yeah, they had two third and long conversions, and then they had the fourth and short conversion. But heck of a drive by this Blue Valley offense as they started on their own five-yard line and taking advantage of going with the wind in this first quarter. Utilizing the passing game and able to stay balanced with the run and pass. And Kevy talked about it. They like to stay 50-50 and they uh, pass maybe a couple more times than what Olathe the West thought, but when you get into a good rhythm and want your quarterback to stay in it. Keep calling those pass plays. Last kickoff was taken back 56 yards as Richmond gets a hold on this windy night. He bombs it through the back of the end zone, back by the uh, camera crew back there for uh, Blue Valley High School. And now they'll start at the 20-yard uh, line with the offense. You think they were throwing a little more because they had that wind at their back? I mean, hey, let's take advantage of it because we're not going to be throwing when we're throwing against a 20-mile-an-hour wind when we're going against it. I think, you know, you're trying to keep the Olathe the West defense on their heels and you know, they want to play downhill. They want to play physical and being able to switch it up on them and you know, those, those swing passes, that's just an extension of the run game, getting that ball out, open space to John Price. Gatchet, the spin move, still alive, and now gets his face mask grabbed as the flag goes down. 
as he's up near the 28-yard line. So that'll be a first down to via the penalty. Is what a story Gatchet is, as they'll get it on Lonergan, the safety, with the personal foul, face mask, face mask, face mask. number 22, defense, 15-yard penalty. Dalton. First of all, it wasn't 22, and why are they calling out numbers? They usually don't do that. That's a college <laughs> thing. Uh, it was 10 with the face mask grab, but. Results in a uh, first down. Gatchet, once again, uh, really small guy as a ninth grader. Wasn't fast, but really worked hard. Got himself faster, got bigger, got in the weight room, got stronger, and now he's the starting running back, and he's going to be thrown for a loss on this play. And this is N. Jewell, the outside linebacker, and he leads the team. Uh, well, wait a minute. Now he's second. He might lead the team now and tackles for a loss. He's tied for the lead. Now I got it right. This is his ninth tackle for a loss. He is tied with Lincoln Stuvey with nine tackles for a loss after that last play. Yeah, and that's a heck of a play by Braden being able to fight off those offensive blockers in front, able to make that tackle. Quarterback keeping it on the read option and kind of cuts his run short there as and Jewel was trying to strip him of the ball, and he just said, I'm going to go down here and not lose the pigskin. I'll take a decent gain, about six yards on that run, as N. Jewel, the senior, was trying to pick his pocket. Third down and seven. McGavern buying time, hit as he throws, finds Gatchet, and Gatchet runs out. Looks like he's shy of the first down. He made the catch at the sideline, and then it's like he... Uh, yeah, as he was turning to go upfield, I think they marked him out of bounds there. Yeah, he's, it's going to be fourth down and two. McGavern also is their punter, so if they want to do a little pooch punt, he'll stay out there. But they went for it on fourth and goal. Blue Valley stopped him, forced an incomplete pass. They will go for it. McGavern keeps it, and it'll depend on the spot. Boy, this is going to be close, but it looks like he got it. McGavern going down low, and he got the fourth down conversion on fourth down and two. I, I think you have to measure it. Well, it looked like the official he was down signaling. below. Yeah, he signaled yeah, to you, move you, the chains. Yeah, from, and now they're going to... I'm basically standing right at the marker. And yeah, it's very close. Blue Valley's called for a measurement, so... Let's go back to the uh, last two plays. The pass to Gatchet. And he just runs out of bounds. I don't know if he had field awareness, but yeah, he went out of bounds shy. Yeah, he's out two yards short. And then McGavern on fourth down will run it. And they've got to get it to the 47. Yeah. I mean, that's it's right there. I mean, this is going to be uh, how hard do they want to pull on that chain? Now he's short. Come up short. Blue Valley asked for the measurement and got it. They're about a half, half a football length short. And that's another fourth down stop for the Blue Valley Tiger defense. And I think the officials got it correct there. I think they marked the ball in a pretty good spot. But I just saw the official go like this, like move, telling the chain gang, okay, he got it, move along down the field. And Blue Valley said, let's measure it. And it was short. Tigers on offense. Trevor Brush, the quarterback. And this will be John Price running to the boundary, lowering his head and shoulders. And a nice run on first down. So we hear a lot about John Price, the speed. And this time we see John Price as the power back this time. Well, I think he didn't have any other choice. So just lower the shoulder pads and pick up a few extra yards. He got nine, second down and one. Under two minutes to play in your first quarter. Second drive of the game for Blue Valley. And both times they got the football on fourth down stops. Now movement prior to the snap, flags down. 
Bolts will be on Blue Valley. Ball start, number 60, offense, five-yard penalty. Well, that's Blue the uh, left tackle, or the left guard, we beg your pardon, Dylan Gunn. Yeah, they're fortunate to have that play blown dead as the snap hit Andre Davis in the face mask coming through. So not sure if that was going to be a direct snap to him, but definitely not yeah. going to be a direct snap to him. Just yeah, and Andre uh, wasn't keen on catching it there. He was like batting it away. It's, it's running play by Price, not much doing. So, yeah, they dodge a bullet now facing a third down and four yards for Blue Valley. Beat Shawnee Mission North in their first ball game of the playoffs. An interesting note on that game, that was the first ever meeting between Blue Valley and Shawnee Mission North, believe it or not. Shawnee Mission North has been around for over 100 years. They won 35-14, but just never had met until that game. As is tonight's matchup, a first ever meeting between these two schools. As Brush throwing down the field, has a man near the sideline, can't hang on. Is Dalkey is trying to work on his footwork and couldn't reel in the pass, and it'll be fourth down and four now for the Tigers. Yeah, and you can tell he was trying to figure out where he was on the field. He almost was able to haul this in. I wasn't not sure if he was going to be in bounce or not, but been close. Huge stop, though, for the Olathe West defense is able to force Blue Valley into a punting situation. Punters have come out. Will Stroud averaging 37.2. Coaching staff says he's the uh, best in the state, and I just jinxed him and kind of shanked this one off the side of his foot just inside the 30-yard line. So Stroud, who's looking to be a college punter and it's only 20 yards on this one. Is that one off the side of his foot, Johnny? Yeah, and where they're marking it. Where they? Uh, it's going to be a. No, well, actually, there's 15-yard punt. Yeah, I was going to say I thought it was inside the 30. They spotted it at the 32, first and 10. So, a very short punt by Will Stroud, and now under a minute in your first quarter. Olathe West working against a very strong south wind. Quarterback keeping it and nothing doing here as he is uh, shut down on the play. Making the stop is Zechariah Pombo. Not Zechariah, it's Z-E. And the quarterback uh, the mesh point a long time and really uh, just stumbled his way to the ground. Pombo cleaned him up in their 3-4 defense. And that'll wind out the first quarter clock. 7-0 Blue Valley, long 95-yard drive, capped by a Samuel tight end touchdown. That's the difference in the ball game here in this regional second round 6A state playoff game in Kansas. You're watching the High V High School Game of the Week on Spectrum Sports. Welcome to the Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week on a warm and windy night here in Olathe at Seaback. Kevin White, Johnny Beck, and Leon Liebel, our entire Spectrum Sports crew, holding on to their hats tonight. As a front is approaching Kansas City, this game was supposed to be played on a Friday night on the 4th, but they moved it up. Thunderstorms headed to the metro area tomorrow and planted a day early. Gatchet on the run. And he'll get a nice gain. It'll be third down. They're still going to need about five or six. It's not a big deal for Olathe West. This is their fourth Thursday night game. And Blue Valley, this is actually a short week. They played on Friday night in their first round win over Shawnee Mission North. Now playing on a Thursday as McGavern buying time, throwing down the field as Scott. Coughed up the football, covered up by Blue Valley's Robert Marshall. That'll be our first turnover of the game. Scott had the first down. 
And it's a takeaway for Robert Marshall, who leads the team with five interceptions. Yeah, McGavern does a good job of eluding the pressure here, keeping his eyes downfield. Thought he was going to take off, but good pass right there. And again, we see this Blue Valley defense staying aggressive, trying to strip that ball. Wombolt got the strip, the uh, senior cornerback. Well, Scott made the catch, turn, and Wombolt stripped it out. And his running mate there, Marshall, able to cover it up. First and 10 for the Tigers. Price running to the boundary, short side of the field, just across the 40. Well, got uh, two fourth down stops. You got Price shaken up now. Yeah, so we'll go see the uh, trainer over there. And we'll see uh, Rudman come in the game. Max Rudman is the backup running back. Number 27, senior. Guy that's been a quarterback throughout his career. And he incorporated that uh, part of his game and beating Blue Valley West with a halfback pass. 30 seconds left to beat them 25-22. And here's Brush to the sideline and Davis can't make the catch incomplete. Yes. Ball hit him right in the hands, and I know if you ask Andre, probably he'd say I should have had that one. But now he's passing against the wind, his brush, and that uh, has some effect on the uh, spiral of the football, I would think. Well, you get so used to catching the ball and getting upfield, and that ball just takes a little bit more time to get into your hands. And right there, you can see that Kev, you just said, just not able to haul that ball in. But brush with a good pass into the wind. I apologize, Trevor calling you Trevor Bush before. Third down and six. This pass gonna be deflected and intercepted back the other way. Comes Liker, the safety man. Samuel, the tight end, makes the stop. So turnover is even at one apiece. And nice play by Maddox Liker, the junior free safety as he records. I believe that's his first interception of the year, the junior. Let's see who got the tip here. You see Johnson no, on the, the ball. No, it wasn't tipped. The ball just kind of hung up in that wind, I think. I don't see a tip. Carson Buster may have got a fingertip on it. Let's send it down to Leon. Yeah, hey, Kevin, that, that ball was just caught up in the wind. It was just floating up there. And then on the previous plat, uh, pass to Andre Davis, that was like a knuckleball. It was kind of hard to handle for him. The, the wind has really become a big factor down here as it was from the beginning of the game. From the 17, Gatchet is stuffed by uh, Lincoln Stuvey. Stuvey's dad played at Mizzou. I said, is this guy a, a future star? They said he's a star now. He is second in the team in total tackles, lead the team in tackles for a loss, sacks, quarterback hurries, and has three fumble recoveries. Once again, his dad played at Missouri. And all his brothers are named after presidents. That's the interesting thing about Stuvey as they set up the screen. McGavran to McGavran. And this is Micah, the little brother, in for the touchdown. So Mason finding his little brother, the H-back. And it is Micah McGavran for the touchdown. So the tight ends or H-back scoring in this one. And it's a 7-6 ball game. Going to late the West. Able to take advantage of the turnover. Putting points on the board inside of their own 20-yard line. But we go back to this screenplay you're going to see these big boys up front get out there and make a couple pretty big blocks that sprung that pass into the end zone gadget running back and also their place kicker and he knocks it through to tie the ball game at seven here in the second quarter we go back here and we see the great play call here good pass and you see burge and zwart out in front, just hammering their guys. and we get into the end zone right there is just great job getting those linemen downfield. You see his work there kind of slip a little bit, but we'll stay in front of the defender. And we talk about being able to take advantage of turnovers and turn it, turn it into points in the late the West. 
able to do right do that right there and kind of swing the momentum back into their favor. Now Burge has really been playing well. He's an All-Stater. Zwart is an All-Stater. They made changes on their offensive line, went to a two tight end look. Those big guys, key guys. Zwart getting offers from Missouri State and Southeast Missouri State. Burge getting D2 offers. But being able to get in the open field and, you know, make those type of blocks, that's what you're going to need to be able to do at the next level. Price can't handle the kick. It'll get into the end zone for a touchback. It was in the field of play where he touched the ball, but it made its way to the end zone. And now Brush and the offense coming out for Blue Valley. After a, a turnover, that is one of the Achilles heels for this Blue Valley offense and their quarterback brush. That is his 15th interception of the year to go along with 13 touchdown passes. So when you got more INTs than touchdowns, that's not good. And that was a wind-affected ball. I see if maybe they go back more to the ground game with John Price. Well, it's good to see Price back in the game, kind of hobbled off that last drive. But back on the field, looks like he's ready to go. Here's Price, second level, and he'll get it to the 30-yard line right at the first down marker. Price, 12 touchdowns, 7.6 yards per carry. He's had five 100-yard games, and here's a nice 10-yard run on first down. A yeah, good cut back there. Pick up a few extra yards there, pick up that first down. Now you're going into the wind and being able to control the ball. Brush throwing down the field to his big target, Davis, who had beat his man. And that was Russman with the coverage and couldn't bring it down. Incomplete, and that's a big what if. And that's tough to do to overthrow a guy like Andre Davis throwing into the wind, but. Yeah, he, that ball. Just off the fingertips. Able to cut through that south wind. And you saw him go back up. He's been fighting a shoulder problem and came back and practiced this week. So I don't know if that shoulder is 100%. Yes. Second down and 10. Hard charging run by John Price. As you heard, the pads are popping down there as the linebackers uh, Johnson and Novacek collaborate on the stop. And it's going to be third down. And it'll be third down and four as we go for a audio check down on the field. That's what you got to expect if you're he's a late the West defenders. You're going to have to get a little bit lower than John Price and stop him below the waist. Quick pass, tight end. And it's a first down. That's actually a Dalkey from the uh, slot area, wide receiver. Dalkey makes the catch, a little shaken up. Guy that's getting some NEIA looks. And Dalkey trying to work that shoulder. Over 20 catches on the year, also plays on the baseball team. Honorable mention, all EKL last year. But it is a first down catch. Move the chains for the Tigers. As they scrimmage near midfield. Here's Price again. And Price he gets pretty low on when he finishes his runs. He's, and now he is uh, slow to get up. And you know what that means. Yeah, he was kind of falling forward. And the defender just going to make a play. And it looks like they the went helmet to helmet. Officials want to send him off. And they will send him off. Trainers will take a look at him. Oof. That was helmet to helmet with the uh, strong safety uh, Rupsoy. And Obviously, that's unintentional. It just, uh, it's going to knock Price out of the game for a little bit. Once again, it'll be uh, Rudman. Backup running back number 27 in the ball game. Second down and five, play action, brush. 
Winds up, throws down the field, incomplete to Davis as he chucks the defender, Swearingen. And no flags fly. Now a flag does fly from the sideline area. This may be uh, Olathe West protesting the no call. Well, the first pass that Andre Davis caught, they were kind of upset that he got away with the push off. And right there, I mean, you can't do that. The defender has every right to the football. And that's right under your nose. Sideline warning. Oh, sideline warning on Olathe West. And still third down. So they will not be penalized. Next time they get a sideline warning, they will be penalized. But here's the play. Swearingen had the inside position, and the wide receiver just chucked him. And if the rolls are reversed, they're definitely throwing that flag. So a little bit more consistent there is they've already kind of put the referees on alert. About that push off. Big down and distance, third down and five from the 48. 7-7, seven, seven. second round playoff game in 6A. Brush twirling the football and finds Andre Davis on the slant. Now, did the ball come out? The officials are saying what here? Did he make the catch? No, they say the ball hit the ground incomplete. Davis is shaken up. So incomplete pass to Andre Davis on the slant. Yeah, you see the linebacker cheating over there. He just it's a little bit too far outside, and that's it's tough to tell. Davis does a good job of he tumbled with the ball on it. his stomach, and then the ball came out. I think they're going to say he just never completed the All catch. Right. No catch. Punting unit out, Stroud on fourth down and five will punt from midfield. Last punt was only 15 yards. This one against the win, an end over end, trying to stay low and out of the win. Ball will go 25 yards, no return. Let's take another look at this Andre Davis catch or no catch. The ball is on his stomach. The ball is going to be ripped away by the defender, Longhorn, while the ball is on his stomach. So is that a uh, fumble recovery? I mean, the ball never touched the ground. The official signaled that the ball hit the ground incomplete. Well, I think, you know, once a, your back, elbow, or knee hits the ground, I think he completed the, the catch. Now, I really thought he'd made the catch, but this could have been a takeaway by the safety man or the cornerback. Well, nonetheless, first and 10 from the 26. Owls on offense. 7-7 seven, seven, score, quick pass, low and incomplete as that ball was intended for Elijah Hakeem who had that long uh, kickoff return and that one's on um, Mason there. As he just throw it right at the shoelaces of his wide receiver, Hakeem. Mason wants to play college football. And Question is whether he'll be able to stay at quarterback. I think he'd like to play uh, quarterback in college. But might have to move to a different position as uh, Richmond makes the stop. Richmond, the sophomore linebacker, their leading tackler. Brother Mason is the left tackle for the Iowa Hawkeyes. His dad, John, is a golf pro. And uh, McGuire also plays golf as well, plays basketball. A nice tour of the new gymnasium over at Blue Valley High School. Sideline incomplete to Jack Scott. Coverage by Wombolt. And it's fourth down. Looks like a three and out now for O West. But getting back, Blue Valley, uh, they've redecorated the backside of their school. And I was like, what is all these uh, new shiny stuff back here? They got a brand new gymnasium. With a video board is the punt away by McGavron. And this one with the win. And now they'll feel it at the 10 yard line. That is Lonergan. And he'll get about five yards on the return. 60 yard punt. Wow. A south wind blowing 20 to 25 miles an hour. Always a friend of the punter, Johnny. Well, well not only do you get the flight of the football, but typically you're going to get the bounce as well. And See right there, able to flip the field, and now you're forcing Blue Valley to go into the uh, wind here with still six minutes to go in the second quarter. 
So you're hoping that punt's going to get you the ball back with even better field position. Officially spotted at the 16, first and 10. Richmond, or uh, Rudman in the game. Richmond's the linebacker. Rudman is the running back, so. Ball star, number 76, offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. Let's check in with Leon. Well, Kevin, you may have just seen John Price, number 23 for Blue Valley, just got on the field. He was shaking up pretty good. A couple plays ago, the uh, trainer gave the thumbs up, and he's back All in right. the game. All right, John Price cleared to go, so he is back out there. Penalty will set up first and 15 for the Tigers. So good to have John uh, Price back on the field. He went helmet to helmet, passed Andre Davis. And he'll run out about a yard ahead of the uh, original first down marker. Not much uh, doing there. Andre see, Davis. Yeah, you see the Olathe the West defensive backs giving the cushion. And Andre Davis said, just give me the ball, and I'll pick up a few yards after catch. But West defender did a good job of coming down and making a good play. Second down and eight. So able to get a good gain there. Davis lining up at the top of their screen. And now the ball on the field on the snap was poor. And uh, looked like uh, McLaughlin tried to cover it up. And the quarterback able to cover it up. There's McLaughlin, the uh, nose guy. And he couldn't cover it up as Brush. So the snap was poor. Brush able to cover it up. The quarterback and save the, the center on this play, Ron Miller. Yeah, he just snapped it into his backside. And Brush able to beat the defensive lineman to the football. But they lose four yards. It'll be third down and 12. Back to the 14-yard line. Five and some change before Hyvee at the half. Throwing against the wind and finding his man. And that is Grady Westfall. And it's immediately uh, blown dead at the 21-yard uh, line. It'll be fourth down. So they're not able to get the first down. Punting unit coming out. Fourth down and five, and now they're going to punt against the win with Will Stroud. Let's see if he, uh, again, when I'm hitting a drive against the win, let's use some golf vernacular. Hit a low hook. I'm going to keep it down and low. Low draw. And then we got penalty flags prior to the snap. Offense, five yard penalty. This one on the Blue Valley special teams. Yeah, this is exactly what Olathe West defense was trying to do after the good punt. Forced Blue Valley to get a quick three and out. And they've got nobody back here to receive this punt. Punt away again, a little low end over end, trying to take advantage of the field turf roll and get it out to the 49. 32 yards is about as good as you can do. Came in averaging 37. Once again, uh, you're just joining us. The wind is strong out of the south. This game was supposed to be played on Friday. Thunderstorms are coming tomorrow, and they didn't want to deal with the thunderstorms, rain, delays, so they moved the game up a day. But now you're dealing with a strong south wind that's blowing ahead of the frontal system heading into the metro area. And now the ball spotted at the 48, first and 10. 7-7 seven, seven score. Both teams have a H back or tight end touchdown as they're scoring. There's Gatchet. Get about uh, four on the play. Stuvey with the stop. You know, you got, uh, once again, all the brothers named after presidents. You've got a brother named Taft. Of course, you got Lincoln there on the field. And then uh, Hayes. So the family decided to name all their sons' first names by presidents. As a quarterback read option, now the late pitch. And to the edge goes Mason Barnard. Now Mason is the future quarterback. 
One of the original kids from their uh, youth football program, been playing in the youth football program. If you come and watch a uh, practice, the fifth graders show up as the uh, high school owls are leaving the field to get in a practice. He's one of the original kids in the kids program, along with Micah McGavern as quarterback. And they make that uh, gadget with a uh, dive on a first down. And what's doing on that first down run? Here's McGavern down the sideline. Scott making the leaping catch on the sideline. Good coverage by Womble. And it is a first down inside the 15. As they're going to spot this football down near the 12-yard uh, line. It'll be a 24-yard game. What a catch by Jack Scott. Yeah, you see McGavern throwing that ball up there, and Scott high pointing the ball. Doing a good job of getting his body turned, staying in bounds. Big pickup there for Olathe West. And they'll run it with Gatchet flagged down as he's able to work his way down to the five. Might be another face mask on Blue Valley. Yeah, you see Gatchet kind of get thrown around and I think three officials threw their flags there. Read the lips. It's a, the official, the umpire saying face mask on Blue Valley. Only half the distance penalty coming up. Kyle Summer is still working through all the logistics of the penalty. Well, it should be half the distance from where he was tackled at. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Half the distance to the goal, and still first down. This will be first and goal. We'll see who uh, looks like. Uh, I think that's Robert Marshall. Yeah, the safety and Gatchet darts into the end zone. Touchdown, Olathe West. Nice opening by the big guys up front there of Clark, Zwart, Burge, Spritzer, Payne, and Bowers. As could have drove a golf cart through that hole. And Gatchet able to get in. And that is his 17th rushing touchdown of the year. And he'll stay on the field for the PAT. PAT by Gatchet. He's two for two. 14 7. The Owls lead it. And you go back to this pass play McGavern to Scott. Scott doing a good job going up and getting that football. Got to win those one on ones. And Scott able to bring it down. And then Gatchet able to finish off that drive. But you got to go back to that punt that McGavern had. Pin in Blue Valley inside their own 20 yard line. And then. Olathe West defense able to force the quick three and out and give this Olathe West offense really good field position and they take advantage of it. Gatchet has no field goals made, but he is now 30 of 34 on PATs. He has 11 touchbacks. Will he get one win aided here? Yep. 12, touchback, uh, 12 touchbacks for Senior Vincent Gatchet. And from the 20, now Blue Valley working against the win. Full complement of timeouts, Johnny, and three and some change before Hy-Vee at the half. Numbers highlights brought to you by Hy-Vee. Yeah, you got to be careful here if you're Blue Valley. You, know, you, you don't want to try and force it down the field. You have plenty of time. Like Kev said, you still got three timeouts. You can still stay in your basic offense here. You just got to make sure you're getting up to the football. If the ball stays in play, you're getting your guys lined up. But at the same time, you don't want a quick three and out here. Swing pass. This is more of a uh, lateral. And Price able to turn the corner and run for the first down across the 30. So 
Couldn't tell if he was wanting to throw that ball or not. It looked like Andre Davis was working up the sideline. And Price a little slow to get up after that play. And once again, the uh, swing pass, or it's kind of just more like a lateral. Price always uh, turns completely around to make the catch each time, but able to turn it into a 12-yard gain and a first down to the 32-yard line. Pistol formation, pump fake. They're going deep again to Davis, and he cuts the route short, comes back. Did he make the catch? He was out of bounds, incomplete. It's second down. Andre uh, did the uh, back shoulder uh, catch here, but didn't get his foot in play. No, oh, did a great job of going back to get the football, but might have tapped his heel on that white line as you see the Olathe West defenders. Kind of the first to notice it. Yeah, he was out of bounds. Uh, yeah, yes, with both feet, it looks like. He tried to stick a toe in. Second down and 10. Price using the stiff arm. And he'll run out of bounds. And he is still uh, limping as he comes back on the field. We've seen him... Uh, I don't know if he had a hand injury earlier, Johnny. Uh, you seen him at helmet to helmet. Now he's kind of gimpy out there. The life of a running back. They take a lot of uh, wear and tear. Third down and five. Tigers don't want to give the ball back to the Owls. Quick pass, and it's incomplete. As they were looking at... Uh, Grady Westfall, the pass was behind him. Coverage by Swearingen, the linebacker. See, he is their top defensive player, and uh, this pass just a little off the mark, and you saw the look there by the wide receiver Westfall. A little glance to the impending hit he was going to take. And now Stroud again punting against the wind. Low snap. Now has trouble, able to run away and get it away, but the wind just puts the kibosh on this one as it crosses midfield. Talk about just hitting a brick wall. That was the south wind as that one went only 15 yards, but I guess they're lucky to get it out of there after the low snap by the long snapper. Yeah, great, great job even to get the punt off. As you see, the snap is low. Good recognition there. And Again, that could have been disastrous, not that it turned out great, but he's got a positive punt there. And well, I want to do say a heads up. They're working with their backup long snapper. Owen Reinert is normally their uh, long snapper. He broke his arm in practice on Tuesday. Right at the end of the practice, he hit his uh, forearm on a helmet and broke his arm, so they have to work in a backup uh, snapper lose a linebacker as well so we wish Owen uh, a good recovery but he is on the sidelines with his arm in a sling and probably uh, heartbroken he can't play in this ball game because he is a senior as McGavern on the run for about three yards there he is right there yeah you hit your arm on a teammate helmet there at the end of practice and break your arm so you lose your long snapper, your short snapper, and a, a linebacker. That's several positions being lost when you lose this young man. So some of the long snaps might not be that great as now McGavern setting up the screen. Gatchet with the catch with room to roll. Gatchet inside the 40. Down inside the 30 and finally ridden down by the linebacker Richmond, but Gatchet showing good hands. It gets a nice screen pass. And he'll get a gain down to the 27. It'll go for 23 yards and a first down. Yeah, and give a lot of credit to McGavern right there, being able to stick with it. He knew he was going to take a hit, but able to deliver a good pass there. Big pickup. Gatchet again on a first down run. Good message for kids that, you know, if you're in eighth or ninth grade and you're not the biggest guy in the world and you think, ah, I'm not probably going to play football because it's just too small. This was that guy. He was too small. He wasn't fast enough, but decided to work hard, get in the weight room, worked on his speed, 
And now he's the starting running back for this team as a senior. Vincent Gatchett. Play action, McGavern to the flat, flag down, and this play is blown dead. And now some uh, pushing and shoving Ball after start. the play. Number one, offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Drury made the catch, but uh, play was blown dead. Yeah, it looked like the tight end. Yep. Somebody moved early. And maybe the slot man, Drury, the guy that caught it. Yeah, here's the little bumping after the play. Andre put a shot on him, and Drury didn't like it. Second down and nine. And now they'll throw it back to Hakeem, who will throw it down the field. A little gadget play, and it's too long as the wind catches that one. And the jet stream sends it too long for Jack Scott incomplete. Hakeem saying, I, I threw with my normal amount, except the 20 mile an hour wind carried about five yards too long. Elijah. Illegal formation. More than four in the backfield. Offense. And another penalty on a late west, so it didn't matter. So move it back to the 32-yard line. It'll be second down and 14. Just over a minute to go. Ivy at the half coming your way. Yeah, four people in the backfield is what the call was. And play action again. McGavern throwing, and the pass is caught. Oh, man, tough catch there by Barnard as he takes a whack after making the catch. Olathe West. And Olathe West will burn the timeout. This is a tough catch for Mason Barnard. Yeah, he knew he was going to take the hit, too, and Ooh. not sure how he even holds on to that, but great concentration, great toughness there to hold on to that football. His older brother played in the program, and uh, he's their future quarterback, they say. Shows good hands as a wide receiver. It'll be third down and three after the Owls timeout. Yeah, big pickup there for Olathe West as it was second and 14, but now you're putting yourself in a more manageable situation, and we know this team likes to go for it on fourth down, so you get two shots here to pick up three yards. You still have two timeouts left. Still got plenty of time on the clock, so... A uh, skiing theme, I think, by the Owls fans. Johnny was trying to borrow somebody's goggles there. As <laughs> they're heading up to the press box. And the quarterback on the read option, McGavern, first down as he's down to the 15-yard line. Taken down there by Jewel, the linebacker. But now we're under a minute. McGavern gets 6.9 yards per carry. He's a good runner. He's got 500-yard games this year, and now he's going to run it here. Breaking the tackle and turning the corner. Five, touchdown! Mason McGavran from 15 yards out in a play that looked like he was going to be thrown for a loss. Bounced off a tackle, got to the edge, and takes it in for his 14th rushing touchdown of the year. Well, McGavran decided to keep it on the, on the option, and... Uh... Like Blue Valley had him stop behind the line of scrimmage, but fancy footwork and he's able to keep going and get in the end zone. And Kevin, like you said, it looked like a couple of those Blue Valley guys just thought that he was down or he was stopped behind the line of scrimmage and didn't really finish the play through the whistle. Gatchet, extra point good, three for three as you take a look at Mason McGavran. Well, his little brother scored earlier, the H-back. Uh, and now the rushing touchdown here. Here's the screen pass that was set up to get inside Blue Valley territory there. There's that huge second down pickup that made it a more manageable third down situation. And did you see all the white jerseys? Just not able to bring the Gavin down. But Kevin, you talked about it. He's a big guy. He's not going to go down. You're trying to tackle him up around the shoulder pads. He's a guy you got to go low on. And it's almost like he's getting stronger as the game's going on. As you see the seven plays, 53 yards. Tapped off by that 15-yard TD run. 
That's a huge touchdown for Olathe to West to get that right before halftime. And that should put him over the 1,000-yard mark for the season as this will be a touchback for Price. He had 1,250 last year, just over 1,000 this year. And 14 rushing touchdowns to go along with 15 passing touchdowns. So this guy is 29 touchdowns, a lot of yards both passing and rushing. I think if you're Blue Valley, you're just probably going to take this into halftime. You do get the ball after halftime, so you want to be super conservative here. You do have three timeouts, but going into win, that's going to be tough to get the pass plays off, get enough yardage. I think you probably uh, take a knee and figure it out in the second half. You'll have the football to start the third quarter. Motion by Westfall and whistles prior to the snap. This penalty on Blue Valley, and they definitely it's take offense. a knee. And Five yard penalty. Let's go Still into the locker down. room and talk about it. We're only down by two touchdowns. And you look at Coach Terrell. Played at K State as an offensive lineman. Army Brett grew up in Lansing, Kansas. First and 15. I'll give it off to Price. And Price knocked down on the play. Rupsoy, the strong safety, uh, making a nice tackle in the open field. One of the uh, team captains. And let's see if Blue Valley wants to uh, snap it. Uh, Rupsoy, uh, a late starter to the uh, football game, started playing in seventh grade. It was his first year of playing football. Just loves the game to make big plays in the secondary for this Owls defense. And that's the that end will of the first half. Do it for the first half. Well, Blue Valley got off to the nice start leading at 7 nothing then 21 unanswered points by the Owls as they got two rushing touchdowns and a passing touchdown. The McGavern family taking part, Micah scoring the uh, first Passing touchdown, and older brother Mason scored just before halftime. 21-7, your halftime lead for the Olathe West Owls as the two seed as they lead the uh, seventh seeded uh, Blue Valley Tigers. As we check in with Leon. And I'm with Olathe West head coach T.J. O'Neill, and you got the big lead here at halftime. How important and how much of a factor is the win, and how important was it to have it at your back there in the second quarter? Well, it's def it's definitely a factor in the passing game and kicking game and all that stuff, so it's we're having to make adjustments just like they are. How frustrating was it that you did get good field position against the wind in that first quarter and got it down to the goal line, couldn't get it, and they turned around with a 95-yard uh, scoring drive? Yeah, you know, we had to work out some jitters there. We had some mental mistakes there early, but I'm proud of the way our kids responded there in the second quarter. You know, we talk about the win, but your defense has done a pretty nice job, too, of stopping it. Yeah, they're playing well. It's, uh, you know, about the best they've played all year, so we're going to need them again here in the second half. They got the ball coming out, so we're going to need a big stop here. Second half, yeah, is that what it's going to take? I think so. It's a playoff game against a really, really good program, so it's going to be a battle till the end. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Thank you. Kevin? Thanks, Leon. T.J. O'Neill and the Owls lead at 21-7 at the halftime break. Coming up, we've got Hy-Vee at the half. We've got the uh, numbers and highlights brought to you by your employee-owned Hy-Vee stores. The McGavern brothers, big part of this one in the first half. Receiving touchdown, Gatchet got a rushing touchdown. And older brother Mason McGavern with a 15-yard touchdown. Owls lead at 21-7 at halftime. Kickoff return here, electric play by Elijah Hakeem. Late the West getting inside their own 10 yard line or inside Blue Valley's 10 yard line, but Blue Valley able to stop fourth down there and 
Blue Valley offense started at their own five yard line. Trevor Bush with the big pass to Andre Davis for the third down pickup. John Price able to pick up fourth down conversion. You see the tight end Gatlin Samuel with first points of the board and then the Blue Valley defense again able to stop Olathe West on fourth down. Late the West kind of got going in the second quarter. See the pass to Gavern to Scott, but force fumble there. Late the West defense turns right back around, gets the interception, and then Late the West gets on the board. McGavern to McGavern. See those big guys out front with the good blocks, and then Late the West getting the ball back. There's Scott with a little bit of redemption right there, going to get that ball with. Like the West finishing in the end zone here on the touchdown run by McGavern. 21-7 as we go into halftime. And Olathe West really took advantage of that second quarter and good field position. Ready for the third quarter kick. Gatchet has it on the tee. It's being held because the wind is blowing like crazy. And you see the wind affecting the kick from the 10. Price on the return. And Price 16 yards out to the 26-yard line. And the offense coming out after the special team stop by Cole Melvin. And it'll be Trevor Brush in the offense. John Price at running back. Let's see who else they bring out. Let's see uh, Harold Davis. Wide receiver position. Yeah, we saw an effective passing game for Blue Valley in the first quarter. We'll see if they can replicate that here. Dalkey as well as this pass incomplete, looking for Andre Davis on a comeback route. Well, and we talked down to ten. Yeah, and we talked about Andre Davis's shoulder bothering him, and a lot of times you think you know he's just trying to avoid contact, but it seems to be bothering him when the ball's above his head and he's got to kind of reach that arm up there and. Right there, not able to bring that pass in. He's a long guy. I mean, he's definitely a guy who's going to do well at the next level as he's a big target and covers a lot of range with those limbs. Second team all league last year headed to K-State. Fake the pitch, going down the field, and this bullet is incomplete. And that was a wind-aided fastball, and Grady Westfall should know it. As he throws a baseball 90 plus miles an hour as a sophomore. And that one, uh, Brush really let go here. And then the wind just grabbed this ball and put a little extra mustard on it. Yeah, it almost kind of pushed it towards the middle of the field. It wasn't so much the wind behind it as it was a little bit of the directional push there. As this wind is really picking up now. Third down and 10. Brush going to take off. And he is taken down. Finished off in the play by Maddox Liker, the junior free safety, as he was reading the quarterback's eyes. And uh, as soon as the quarterback took off, Brush ran into Liker, and it'll be a three and out for Blue Valley. And yeah, Brush just trying to pick up that first down. Good job by the Al defense. Just doing their job, not over pursuing, staying in their spots, able to make a big play and forcing the quick three and out. Jack Scott deep back and Stroud sends a high short punt down the field. And takes an Olathe West bounce before it's touched down there. 33 yards and no return ball at the 34 yard line for Olathe West. Now working against the South Wind tonight. This game was supposed to be played tomorrow, the 4th of November, but with the pending uh, weather moving into the metro area, they decided to move it up a day. And it's warm, it's not raining, but it is really, really windy. With that front coming in, the winds from the south are blowing 20 to 25 miles an hour, and this is a really wide open stadium on the Kansas Prairie. And uh, here goes McGavran off to the races. The quarterback turning on the speed. They're not gonna get him, touchdown. Mason McGavran, like a bolt of lightning. The big quarterback at six foot 205, got into the secondary and said goodbye. 
for the long touchdown run. Again, it's those big guys out front that allow McGavern to get to that second and third level. And I give a lot of credit to these guys up front. As Kevin talked about, it's the strong suit of this team. And they need a big run. They rely on those guys up front. And right there, McGavern able to. Extra point up and good by Gatchet. So second rushing touchdown of the night for Mason McGavern. And just a simple replay, but you see the, the hole up front. See the speed right there of McGavin as he gets into the open field, and what a heck of a start for this Alate the West team in the second half. You get a three and out Crystal stop foul. by your defense. Roughing the kicker, number 10, defense. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. So there was a penalty. Gatchet got knocked down as you see the 66-yard uh, rushing touchdown by... Mason McGavern from the 34 to the house. So he is uh, having a big night. Yeah, just one play, 61 yards. 15 seconds off the clock, but yeah, you got to give a lot of credit to this Olathe West defense as they kind of set the tone. Getting the ball back to their offense. We knew this Olathe West team was going to keep the keep the ball on the on the ground but so now the uh, penalty on Blue Valley roughing the uh, kicker yes. yeah, Gatchet got upended after he kicked the ball yeah, that's Lonergan just trying to make a play and just kind of slides into the kicker's plant foot there so they'll kick into the wind, and even with the penalty yardage, uh, Price is going to run it out, and now fumbles the football. And Blue Valley covers it up inside the 10-yard line. Is coming up with the uh, fumble recovery. It was Ben Dalkey, one of their wide receivers? As Price, uh, does he field this ball or let it go into the end zone? I, don't I mean, I mean I the Owls had a lot of room to. You're cover this. You're trying to make a play, and you know, he's a playmaker, so he thinks, you know what, I can take this to the house and get my team a little bit of momentum, but instead, you got to give a lot of credit to that Olathe the West kickoff team as they stayed in their lanes and covered the kick, but that penalty really helped because Olathe the West able to get a full kick down the field. And that wind just held that ball up and allowed those West guys to get down there and make a play inside the 10 yard line. I want to say that was uh, Mocha, Justin Mocha, who got the fumble cause. Toss sweep. And John Price across the 10-yard uh, line, out to the 13-yard line, a gain of four. Now Blue Valley finds themselves in a hole. Last time they had the wind at their back, we saw them throw more. They're deep in their own territory. Brush to throw, and the quarterback in trouble and able to throw it away. Will it be a grounding call coming up here? The officials are going to talk about it. Yes. Well, I'm not sure he got out of the tackle box. And, yep. Yeah, Marcus Johnson looked like he had the quarterback wrapped up, and uh, Brush... Ready to get rid of it at the last second. Yeah, it's wherever the quarterback threw the ball from is where the, the ball's placed Intentional at. grounding, number one. Offense, the ball did not make it past the line of scrimmage. Half the distance to the goal with the loss of down, third down. So it'll be third down and 17 as they are really backed up. Let's see who had the uh, oh, 41, I beg your pardon. It was uh, Johnson. That was Johnson, the linebacker. I think I said. Uh, well, if you're Blue Valley, you just let Andre Davis run down the field and throw it up to him. Well, Rush rolls right, 
Going to go deep down the field. Too long for Davis. And again, the wind just grabs the ball. And Looks like Davis stopped his route, though, and kind of turned around, not knowing if he was going to get it, and then took off again. And I got you. I think Brush was a little bit confused, but... Not on the same page, receiver and quarterback, and they'll have to punt it out of their own area. But I feel like the quarterbacks are having the problems, you know, on the ones against the wind are tough, but then when you're throwing with the wind, the ball tends to sail a bit on you. Brush looks a little frustrated. Maybe that he, his wide receiver did kind of cut off the route too early as the punt is away. This will be fielded by Scott just inside the 50-yard line. Scott with plenty of running room. And Scott all the way down to the 22-yard line on the return. 46 yards on the punt. And 26 yards on the return. And now here comes the Owls as Jack Scott, tall, angular wide receiver. He's 6'4", a buck 75. Well, and Blue Valley was in that protect plan as they didn't want to get that putt blocked in their own end zone. So not a lot of guys down the field covering the football, and Scott does the right thing, sees the open space and picks up quite a few yards on that return. Gavron, 15 rushing touchdowns on the year, over 1,000 yards. Here's Gatchet turning it on. Gatchet into the end zone. Touchdown, Olathe West, 22-yard rushing touchdown. Now Gatchet. Has two on the night. And Olathe West pouring it on in the second half. Yeah, and watch Elijah Hakeem out there in the open field on Michael Landry just doing a good job of stock blocking and catch it, make a, makes a couple guys miss and finds his way into the end zone for the second time tonight. Gatchet, four for four on PATs. Two rushing touchdowns. Extra point. Right down the middle. It's added up for him. Uh, he's got 17 points scored tonight. And here's his second rushing touchdown of the night. And you see the good job on the Thomas Clark seal on the outside. And he's got that gets. It's got that speed to get outside. Again, give a lot of credit. You see seven out there. Elijah Hakeem doing his job and Gatchet able to find that front pylon and 35 to seven. You see just the one play, 22 yards. And again, this will late the West defense. Penn and Blue Valley deep inside their own territory, punting out of their own end zone. Getting good field position and taking full advantage of it. Well, they got the short field with the Jack Scott punt return of 26 yards. One play later. Gatchet is into the end zone. Now Gatchet, this time will have to kick from the normal spot back at his own 40. Against the wind. See the wind hammer the ball. As the return from the 24. It is a... Uh, Dennis Patrick on the return, and we got a flag down as Patrick will shake it up after that kickoff return. This is against Blue Valley. This is going to be pretty devastating. As a decent field position here. There is no foul on the play. It's first down, Blue Valley High. So they pick up the flag, first and 10. And spot the football at the 35-yard line. Blue Valley in a big hole. Still has the wind at their back. But really, the passing game has not been really that sharp. We saw it early on in the game. They were pretty sharp with the uh, throwing of the football. But since then, it's... Tough night to throw as they go jet sweep with Andre Davis. And Andre. A gain of three yards. And he's been fighting shoulder problems. He got him back this week. And still think the shoulders might be bothering him a little bit as 
Get the uh, jet sweep going. Nice play by Swearingen there on the edge. Yeah, taking on the block from John Price and then being able to make the tackle. Heck of a play by Swearingen. Swearingen is uh, probably their best all-around defensive player. As here's Price, and runs out of real estate as he is pushed out. Again, that's Sean Swearingen. Man, talk about owning the edge. Number two in blue has been doing that tonight. No matter what side, Sean Swearingen listed as a weak side outside uh, linebacker. And I will mention all league last year, but uh, if you talk to the coaches, they say he's our best all around defensive player. Well, anytime you're defensive back and you're physical in the run game, you're going to be able to make an impact in the last two plays. He's big stops. Brush now on a third down pass, deflected and nearly intercepted. Yes, that is uh, Justin Longhorn thinking what if, as it'll be a three and out for Blue Valley. And again, just a little bit high on that pass. Davis not able to get the mitts on it and bring it down. And and you got a quick three and out for this Olathe West defense. And the offense really, uh, since that initial drive, has really not been effective. And here's uh, Stroud, and this is a bomb of a punt down to the 12-yard line. And Scott for a 10-yard return. After a 51-yard punt. And the Owls will take over. The game of the week is brought to you by Hy-Vee. They're proud to support Kansas City High School Athletics. One of the few booths with the lights on here. Well, maybe she should turn the lights off. I feel like uh, we're breaking the rules. <laughs> I can't see anything otherwise. I mean. Well, I can tell you, late the West offense has ran two plays in the second half for 83 yards. If Blue Valley's defense well, can. I can tell you, I didn't think McGavern was that fast until that last uh, long touchdown run. I remember 60 last plus. year when they played Shawnee Mission Northwest, and I was very surprised with his speed. And a new running back into the ball game now for Olathe West. And that will be Derek Taylor, the uh, senior, 155 pounds. And so he's going to get some looks here. He came in. With nearly 300 yards, 5.1 yards per carry, three touchdowns. He's Gadget's backup, getting some time here in the second half. Bouncing off the tacklers. And should have enough for a Owls first down. Well, this is one of uh, many Thursday night games. Uh, Across the town of Olathe at ODAC tonight. You've got Olathe South and Olathe Northwest, the three against the six seed. And uh, the winner of this game will play another Olathe team next week. And so you either get Olathe South or Olathe Northwest. And the Olathe schools and the Blue Valley schools doing well in the playoffs. You got five schools for each of those school districts. And Olathe has four left. And Blue Valley, if you include uh, Blue Valley Southwest in 5A, they've got four left. But uh, that's going to change tonight. And they're hosting their first playoff game yep. ever tonight. Yep, that's a good point, Johnny. Uh, it's a program that's really grown the last few years. As, you know, we've covered them in the playoffs, but they're always on the road as they're playing the tough EKL League. Coach Warwick. Timberwolves as we get a running play. We want to say congratulations to the cross country team at Olathe West. I was talking to uh, Kelsey Carbajo, the uh, coach uh, yesterday. He was here at practice. She couldn't be here tonight. She's a huge uh, fan, but she's the uh, cross country coach. And they are uh, three straight. Uh, Cross country titles as somebody just came by and turned off our uh, light because they say we're making a glare on the field. So I just suggested we turn it off just to be uh, like everybody else. And uh, 
Some lady just came in here and said, uh, oh, uh, all right, well, uh, now they're turning back on. It's light, light wars here at, in the press box. That's what you get in a 35-7 ball game. Look at Johnny, boy, you, you stand out good there in the light, Johnny. <laughs> this Johnny, do you want the light on or not? I, that lady, I, I, can't, I can't see. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. One of the administrators came by and, uh, yeah, turned him off. All right. all right, we'll be all right here. As here's Taylor on a run, and Taylor, another nice run on a first down play. Wow, good blocking up front. Let's send it down to Leon for an update. Hey, Kevin, we're seeing some different running backs in the game, of course, now for Olathe West, including Derek Taylor, just had that seven-yard run, up 35-7. to seven. This young man's a senior. Rick O'Neill, the running back coach, says they want to get him some playing time, especially in the playoffs here, so that's why he's in the game. But he says if you get this kid in the open field, look out. He's really fast, so we'll keep an eye on him. Thanks, Leon. Yeah. Well, it's good experience. You know, you get in a playoff game. You, know, you can get your a uh, couple of your backups in. Well, that's experience that you know will carry over into next year. Well, third down and short. Owls get Taylor on a cutback and flags are down. Yes, he did get the necessary yardage for the first down. But a penalty flag to deal with. Looks to be a hold. So wave off the first Holding. down. Number 78, offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still third down. That's the center, Burge. Still can't get used to the numbers being called out. But, hey. Get used to it, you're gonna see it in college. So move it back, and they'll spot the football at the 43-yard line, third down and 13. Owls in charge. Well, they had high expectations. I mean, well, it's seven and three uh, last year. They had their quarterback back. Speaking of their quarterback, here's McGavern weaving his way close to the first down. I think he's about a yard short. They had him back, and they had uh, four of their five offensive linemen, so they felt like this is their fifth year of their school. They thought this was the year for them. And they are the two seed in the east bracket of 6A behind uh, school district rival Latham North. But they're going to go for it. Saw them stopped a couple of times in the first half. Offense stays out, fourth down, and... One yard. Barnard goes in motion, then stops in the slot. And we get a timeout. West takes the first charge timeout of the second half. Well, Mason McGavern, uh, he uh, went over 1,000 yards tonight, Johnny. A couple of rushing touchdowns. Yeah, and he shows a you know, good skill set of being able to run in between the tackles and pick up those tough yardage, those tough yards. But he also has shown a lot of speed today with that 61-yard touchdown run, as you see here. Pretty good footwork, pretty good agility, able to get into the end zone there in that second quarter. And this was the first offensive play of the second half for Olathe the West. And right there, there's that speed as he breaks out. Really puts this game out of reach right there as it's 28-7 at that point. And they just keep feeding him the rock, right? Here's that long third down, almost picking up the fourth down, and we'll see if they can't pick that up here. Well, he came in just shy of 1,000, so he goes over 1,000. It's the two rushing touchdowns. Also throws a touchdown pass to his little brother, Micah. So good night for the McGavern family. 
Now fourth down and one after the Owls took a timeout. And they'll run it and not get it. Taylor's blown up. And it'll be ball over on down. So fourth down, still a bugaboo for Olathe West. As they're stopped on fourth down again. As the Tigers will get it. And that was Lincoln Stuvey. And Lincoln Stuvey is one of their uh, big stars. This sophomore class is loaded with uh, stars. Is Stuvey a little shaken up? But I'm told Blue Valley, uh, not only their sophomores are very strong, but classes behind that, the eighth graders, the ninth graders, the seventh graders, there's more lockets coming. There's locket, the locket twins are coming. They say they are, they are going to be loaded with talent and a lot of depth. So... Tigers are losing tonight. Their season probably going to end tonight, but uh, the future looks bright in the next couple of years as Brush taking advantage of the win, incomplete, looking for Grady Westfall. Kind of seeing those Olathe West defenders playing that umbrella coverage and letting the Blue Valley wide receiver stay underneath of them. And Trevor Brush, you just got to Take a little bit off and try and get into a little rhythm here in the third quarter as you're running out of time in terms of uh, being able to have the wind behind your back. Second down and 10. Brush rolling, running out of real estate and throwing too tall, incomplete, looking for Davis on the sideline. And your first thought when you see a game with a, a really strong win and the players are going uh, with and against the win is that the wind is uh, really going to be uh, troublesome going against it but I think it's somewhat troublesome going with it because it's causing the ball to carry more than the players are used to so you've got to adjust to that but now third down and 10 from the 31 Brush stepping up, looking deep middle, has his man. Nice catch. Grady Westfall across midfield for a first down. It's going to go for 23 and a first down. This is a tough catch by the sophomore Westfall. Yeah, Brush, good pocket to throw in, throws a strike, and Westfall, see him. Wow, what a catch. Yep, he, the gloves hanging on for dear life there. Ball at the 46, first and 10. Play action. Again, looking for work. Now that was uh, Samuel, the tight end this time. And again, that pass had some heat on it. Samuel's dad, he played college football at North Dakota State. This guy's a college prospect. Also plays baseball for the Tigers baseball program. But he gets his names flipped. His name is Gatlin Samuel. I see his name Samuel Gatlin on a lot of rosters. That's what you get when you have two first names. Here's Price breaking free down the sidelines. And John Price will take it in. And they say he did not step out of bounds on the sideline. And 46 yards, John Price showing that great speed as the Owls. All they had to do was shove him out of bounds, and Price just dashed right past him for the long score. Yeah, and that's the speed that we talked about in the pregame was you get this guy in the open field, and he's tough to, to catch up to, and right there just takes the nice, easy pitch and catch up the sideline. Richmond, PAT, up and good, 35-14. Door is still cracked open. Watch this little swing pass. They've been using it all night. And then Price gets to the edge. And then, yeah. Price able to break a tackle. And at great speed, they can't run him down. Yeah, that's just an extension of the running game. It's just a you know, toss out or a sweep. And John Price knows what to do in the open field. You see the Blue Valley wide receivers working down the field. Staying with their man. 
So how do you score that? Is that a toss sweep or is that a, a pass? Is that a lateral? Hard to tell where the ball was, was caught at. But it looked like he caught the ball. Our statistician, Ted Boland, says that is a forward pass. So you do not argue with Ted. No, you don't want to, yeah, you don't want him in your grill. All right, yeah, it looks like it's forward. Yep. Double catch and first receiving touchdown of the year for John Price. And now 14 touchdowns thrown by Brush. But he has 15 interceptions. And now on the touchback, it'll be the Owls ball at the 20-yard uh, line. And this third quarter is maybe one of the longest I've experienced this year. And man. Anytime you got 28 points or 21 points scored in a quarter, it's going to take a little bit of time. We'll yeah. see if late the West can. Just seems like uh, it's been big plays and a lot of passes and a lot of stoppages with flags and gadget back in. So I guess the coaching staff, uh, the alarm went off. Hey, uh, still ball game to be played here. I think, you know, a 21-point game with still two minutes to go in the third quarter. You know, you got to continue to go with your game plan. Gatchet a couple of rushing touchdowns. Perfect on the PATs tonight. McGavron, two rushing touchdowns and a touchdown pass. Second down and six. Here is McGavron. Cut back and off to the races. Here comes the speed again. McGavron surveyed, and now we'll just run out of bounds just as he crosses the 40 at the 38-yard line. Looks like a 40-yard run here by McGavron, who continues to pile up the rushing yards. As we already mentioned, he went over 1,000 for the season and just decided, uh, nah, I don't need to play like Josh Allen and take on a Defensive back or linebacker as here's Gatchet. Balls on the ground. And the ball came out as he was spun down. And let's see if Blue Valley has covered it up. Yes, they have. So the tackle was made by Preston Scott. And he, uh, I guess when he was pulling him back, he ripped it out. And Lonergan got the uh, fumble recovery. Well, we've seen this defense several times try and hold up the ball carry and try and rip that ball out. Saw a couple times in the, the first quarter. Fumble recovered by the defense. It's first down, Blue Valley High. Looks like that's Preston Scott in there, and then. Well, like uh, Stroud got the rip. Lonergan got the fumble recovery. Lonergan, uh, Mr. Takeaway now with five takeaways. Play action, and going deep middle, and too tall for Grady Westfall. As he took a shot at the DB at the end of this play, as kind of slapped at the defender in frustration. No flags. And let's see, right at the end of the play here, the ball is gone here, and you see uh, Longhorn come buzzing by him. Well, he did kind of shoulder him there, and just kind of. Just make sure he knows he's yeah. coming over the top. All right. Second down and 10 from the 32-yard line. This is a backward pass to Price. And again, Price working the Blue Valley sideline. Get a gain of about seven, eight yards as Price helped up. And now it's a Longhorn who is involved in the stop, maybe shaken up. You wonder if those are different play calls. You know, yeah, it might be, it, yeah. The yeah. one's being thrown backwards yeah. and one's thrown I mean, forward. It, it's almost identical, but you do see John Price kind of bubble out. Third down and three from the 39 Blue Valley chasing points. As we approach the fourth quarter, pass to the sideline, not close, wide to Davis. 
And it will be fourth down and three. The Tigers will go for it. As again, they're trying to rally in the second half. There's no tomorrow. If you lose tonight, your season will end. You'll end five and five if you're Blue Valley, so you've got to chase those points. The H-back is in a blocking position. Swing it out to Samuel. Again, he makes that wheel around catch. He came and up short. He came up short of the first down. He ran out of bounds prior to the first down. And let's see. The officials are spotting him at the 41, needed to get to the 42. And it should be ball over on downs to Olathe West. And Price can't believe it. He thought he'd got the first down, decided to run out of bounds. And he's frustrated as he uh, leaves the field, but he ended up one yard short. And he makes the catch, does the spinorama, which takes time off your uh, play. But then he, he, yeah, 42, and he ran out at the 41. So he just, uh, there's no sticks on this side of the field, on the home side of the field, so that may have went against him. But, uh, yep. So he is a yard Pulling short. Out the field is the runner ran out of bounds on his own, short of the line to gain. Turnover on downs. First down away to West. So the Owls will take over on downs as they get the fourth down stop. Once again, yeah, Johnny, yeah, I mean, there's no chain gang here on the near side, so he just peeled off his run, but peeled it off a yard short. And yeah, now we'll get a gadget run on first down and tackle from behind by. Uh, I mean, he's that is Preston Scott, and that's that dangerous tackle that we saw last week where the guy tackles and then rips the body around, and sometimes your legs, your knees, get, it's a, that's almost an illegal tackle almost. I know you're trying to be a tough guy and whip the guy around, but that is so dangerous and an injury-threatening tackle. It almost should be a penalty. That's the end of the third quarter as they're not going to run any more plays. And uh, Blue Valley... A third quarter score via the pass. Brush, Price. That's the end of the third quarter. Touchdown, Tigers. All right, thanks. Olathe West cheerleaders donning the Spectrum Sports uh, shirts tonight as we are at CBAC, as they call it, College Boulevard Activity Complex. There is the high V scoring by quarters in an hour-long third quarter. We got 21 points scored. And Olathe West, a couple of rushing touchdowns, leads at 35-14. Now facing second down and five as we start playing the fourth quarter. McGavern setting up the screen. And finds his little brother, Micah. And Micah gets about three and a little pushing and shoving after the play. Micah is one of the original youth program kids. And again, you see McGavern staying in it the entire time. He yep. knows he's going to take the shot. He's going to get that ball out. There's a lot of brotherly love. There's seven brother combinations for Olathe West, including the McGaverns. And cut back run, not much doing for uh, Gatchet. Grabbed around the waist there. That was Stuvie again. Well, there's a lot of pride on that side of the, the field. And these guys are gonna Play to the last whistle, and Stuvie's one of those guys who knows that, you know, it might not be the year this year, but he's got to set an example to some of those younger guys that we fight all the way through the fourth quarter. Yeah, Blue Valley, that's a prideful program. I mean, six state titles, seven state runners up. I mean, it's a winning tradition there. It's 
Started with Coach Rampey, then Eric Driscoll, now Coach Terrell. As McGavern runs for the first down and then signals for the first down. Let's see if the West offense manages the clock. You see the quarterback uh, snap the ball with single digits. Players, when they run near the boundaries, will sit down and not run out of bounds. You want to keep the clock running when you lead by 21 in the fourth quarter. And you got a date with another Olathe school coming up. And here's Gatchet. Like uh, Richmond got him from behind. And Second down and six. T.J. O'Neill, his first major loss delivered by the Blue Valley Tigers when he was a junior quarterback at Salina Central. And here goes McGavern finding a seam. McGavern, little stop and go. Deeks the defender into the end zone for the touchdown. 26 yards, there is a flag behind the play at the 21. Looked like it was after the play. Gavron feels like he's the heard the, the call. Is a touchdown after the play, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, number 99, defense. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. So Mana Fa'a Gutu, uh, the nose guard, was the guilty party on the Blue Valley penalty. So the touchdown goes 26. Three touchdown night, rushing for McGavron to go along with. A passing touchdown, so McGavern's been great all night. And Gatchett tacks on the extra point, makes it 42 to 14. And you go back to this TD run by McGavern, and just more of the same. And you see these guys up front for a late the West just wearing down this Blue Valley defense. And McGavern almost gets in there untouched. It's, I've got three touchdowns on the ground. And, to give a lot of credit to those guys that are ready to take a seat. You got Clark, you got Swart, you got Burge, Spritzer, Payne, all these guys. And Kevin, you talked about it before the game. Four out of five returning starters. A lot of time that's overlooked, but when you're a team that likes to run the football, that's a huge advantage. Well, two of the four are all staters, and they'll take the. Uh personal foul penalty yardage on the uh, kickoff and will kick from the 45. We'll see if they elect to just yeah. kick this out of the end zone, if they're going to try and pooch it. And this uh, kick may end up in uh, North Kansas City with uh, from where they're kicking in that wind blowing 20, 25 miles an hour. I don't know. Let's see. Ganchin walking off his steps. Let's see if he bombs this one into the uh, soccer field. It's we're right behind here. It's, it's a long one. It's always fun to kick it through the uprights on the kickoff. All right. So not quite to North Kansas City. It got stopped. I'm told that it hit the uh, locker room area, which is right behind the uh, end zone. It's so all that for a touchback at the 20 yard line. So the penalty really no big deal. And here's Price. And he'll run out of bounds just shy of the 25-yard uh, line. Yeah, well, let's see. Yeah, the guy that has to go get that has got a long run with that wind behind him there. They're blowing the dark on So 
Second down and seven. Tigers working against that win. Price able to get to the edge and deliver a blow as he's across the 30 for the first down, stopping the clock. Price, uh, some angry running there at the end, but gets the first down this time as he's across the 30-yard line. He gets nine on that run. Brush rolling and incomplete to Davis as he was hit on the play by Longhorn and now a flag comes out. Looked like Longhorn had his arm in there. We'll see if he had him wrapped around. The other arm the, there, yeah. yeah. The one you don't see behind. Pass interference, number 10, defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Down. You make the call, and is he too early? Yeah, yeah it looks like he's a little call. too early, yeah. So Longhorn will get the pass interference penalty. Move the ball now to the 47-yard line, Blue Valley zone. Brush after a play action fake. Oh, just missed his man down the field as he was looking for Ben Dalkey. Dalkey got a hand on him but couldn't bring it in. Second down and 10 from the 47. Yeah, the Olathe West defenders took a pretty aggressive line there and Brush yeah. almost got it over the top there to Dalkey. Felt like they were waiting for the wind to affect the ball and maybe knock it down, and they would be right in the per perfect uh, position to get an interception. But Brush's arm carried the day and carried his intended target incomplete. Motion by Dalkey behind the set. After play action again, looking deep middle, and this one comes up short to uh, Davis. Two owls in the area. Yeah, the Owls have done a good job of having somebody over the top on all those deep passes. And, you know, they're you know, not getting the pass breakups. Just their presence there has really been effective tonight. Probably not really able to get anything over the top tonight and get those big plays when they need it. And a score update on the game being played across town at ODAC as Olathe Northwest leading 35-21 fourth quarter. If everything holds true. We'll have uh, Olathe Northwest and Olathe West here at Seaback as now Samuel again at the end of the run kind of chucking people and not making any friends there on the Olathe West sideline, but you can tell he's frustrated. He's a senior and watch the end of this run by the tight end here. Get a first down and then it's near the sideline, boom. And a little chuck, extra, and a little headbutt. No flags, first and 10. There's Price, tackled by Longhorn. Clock running, just to have to go as Price again scrapes himself off the field. You see him uh, get dinged up quite a bit. But. Well, and I think that's what he was doing on that run that he came up short. I think, you know, he's thinking. Save myself. Yeah, and, and, you know, the sticks not being on that side of the field, thought he had picked it up. but Yeah, it's one of those deals. Yeah, you don't want to make any beating that you don't have to. And, yeah, he just ran a little bit short. His brush again, finding the tight end. It's a first down inside the 20 to the 19 yard line. 12 yards for Gatlin Samuel. 
Samuel has a touchdown catch earlier in the ball game. 11 yards. That was the first score of the game. Now has five receiving touchdowns of the year. Rush again. And that was affected by the wind as it uh, definitely sailed. Leon mentioned that the knuckleball effect there, you saw the ball kind of wavering. Again, you see the defenders just playing the umbrella coverage, playing everything in front, and right there almost came up with the, the pick. They were looking for Harrell here, but watch the effect on the ball. It really kind of wobbling, and it wasn't the tightest of spirals, but uh, throwing against that strong south wind is Brush. This one complete. Davis on a cutback. Davis down to the five. This will be a 14-yard catch, and will be first and goal for Blue Valley. And I like the way he comes back to the football and catches the ball with his hands. You know, I see a lot of guys, receivers, you know, wait on that ball and catch that ball on their body, but Davis has really good hands and showcases them on that catch right there. Well, Davis is headed to Kansas State, so he's a D1 prospect. They've got uh, Lockett, and now Brush will take off and keep it himself, and he's down at the one-yard line. You see his knee went down, his body fell into the end zone, but he started to slide around the one, and that's where the official will spot it. It'll be second down and goal for Brush in the Blue Valley offense. And he was kind of in that awkward stage. He didn't know kind of the slide on his butt or head first, but looks like he got just inside the one-yard line. And now Samuel goes under center. And we got whistles, play. Yeah, it looks like we've got a penalty flag. Number 79. Five-yard penalty. This will be on second down. the right tackle. And the five-yard penalty. It'll be second goal. Boyajian. The right tackle. Let's see. 79 is who they got there. Right tackle. Yeah, all right. Well, yeah, didn't see him move. We saw Samuel come in and... But you got his name in there. Well, yeah, I, you know, Julian, I, yeah, I gave it a shot in my phonetic chart. It's, I had to have the team managers practice with me for the three times. Pass too tall for Price, and a flag is down. Yeah, they're going to get him for face garden. It looked like Johnson ever got his head turned around. Again, there's John Price hobbling off. Two flags down, and it's going to be pass interference on Olathe West. Pass interference, number 21. Defense. Half the distance to the goal. Still second down. Half the distance penalty is Price. Hits the linebacker, and they gave the linebacker the penalty. He never really looked back to find the football, I guess. Contacted Price. Just chasing the play, and that's Johnson, the Mike linebacker. Back to the three yard line, second down and gold. Short side run, Price fighting and going to be short. Stop. He stopped inside the one yard line and now shaking up again, and this time a shoulder looks like. Or Stinger or clavicle or you know, the trainer over to take a look at him. And it'll be third down and goal. Looks like he tried to use the stiff arm here and uh, it's kind of got jammed up in yeah. there. We'll go with a power set, and this is the tight end, Samuel, and he did not get there. Fourth down. We saw this play earlier when they called the penalty for the uh, right tackle, the early movement. Samuel, the H-back, will go in and step in front of the quarterback in the normal pistol formation, and he did not get it. They stuffed him. There he is, 35. Yeah, not sure who that is. Uh, looks like, what, 97, McLaughlin? Yeah, McLaughlin. Like McLaughlin. The, yeah, great job shooting the gap. 
Because, I mean, said, all Gatlin Samuel had to do was kind of fall forward there, but not backwards. And fourth down. Tigers down big in the fourth quarter. We'll go, and now we'll get a timeout. Blue Valley takes Blue the Valley will charge. take the timeout. As they try to get some more points. And the game of the week is brought to you by hy They're proud to support Kansas City High School Athletics. Good shot of a Seaback on a warm and windy early November night. Let's check in with Leon. Hey, Kevin, you mentioned uh, several times, of course, T.J. O'Neill, a product of Salina Central, played against Blue Valley in the uh, 1998 uh, state championship game. Blue Valley won that game. In the stands that day for Blue Valley was a young lady, a student there by the name of Emily Melnick. She, of course, was cheering on the Tigers to a state championship against T.J. O'Neill and the Mustangs of Salina Central. Well, about 12 years later, they met. They're now Mr. and Mrs. T.J. O'Neill and Emily O'Neill, now a Big fan of the Olathe West Owls. I asked Coach if she was going to be cheering it off for Alma Mater. He said, not tonight. And they have two beautiful children, Annie and Rhett. Play action, jump pass, tight end catch, touchdown Samuel. His second of the night, Gatlin Samuel. And two touchdown night. Six for the season, and Blue Valley converts on the fourth and goal play. Brush with the touchdown pass. Yeah, Brush did a good job of selling the run. Tossing the ball right over the line there. Well, Brush, 15 touchdowns, 15 interceptions as Richmond in for the point after touchdown. And this is no good. Way left. That was Ball a uh, wind affected kick, probably, as he uh, hooked that one a little left here. As Let's take a look at the Hyvee scoring drive. And nice catch by Davis, got him on the doorstep. Quarterback run to the one. And then they get Price another run to the one. And they go play action and jump pass to their tight end. Gatlin Samuel, his second touchdown of the night. He caught their first touchdown. PAT no good though, 42-20. Five and some change as Taylor goes back for the kickoff return. And we'll see if Blue Valley elects to go for the onside kick as it looks like they're going to. And we'll Yeah, the hands team is on. You see all the guys up, 10 guys up. Waiting near the 50-yard line to get the onside kick. So if you're Blue Valley, you just got to make sure that ball goes 10 yards, but sprinting down the field, trying to get a good hop, trying to get a bounce off one of the front line guys. And if you're a late to West, Got to make sure when you get that ball, you get down as quick as you can and get your, get them covered up. I see uh, Cooper, or uh, is that Dylan Burge? They got an offensive lineman up there. He's going to, you know, clear some interference that's for guys exactly, coming in that's here. exactly what he's there for. Let the to ball let the go through to the guys second get level. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, they've got it. You don't usually see an offensive line, but I have a feeling he's going to try to pick off somebody Coming down, well, now he's trying to field it. And he, uh, I think uh, it's going to be offsides. Let's see what the call is. Did somebody jump early? I Infraction number one, receiving team. Five receiving yard team moved too kick. early. So that was uh, Cam Drury. But did you see uh, who was trying to field it? Dylan Burge threw my uh, theory <laughs> completely out the door. He's trying to grab this ball. Maybe he's got great hands. Look at the big guy here. Uh, maybe not. Well, you got to let that ball go through, especially yeah. as it's going on the ground. It's one of the toughest things to do on a football field is field a ball that's rolling on the ground, especially when you're not used to it. So 
But I can guarantee you that they're going to go <laughs> right back at him. Well, send it to 78. Uh, the guy that's 6'3", about 275, 285, he's, he stands out for you. You've got to make sure your holder's onside. Lonergan holds Richmond. This is a pretty good one. He gets the bounce. The Owls get it, though. That was the backup quarterback, wide receiver, Mason Barnard. Yeah, Future great job. quarterback yeah. for the team. Great job going up and getting that football. That's, that's a tough one. That's a really good kick right there. You want to get that third bounce. But it looked like Burge was providing interference that time for uh, number six. I think they reminded him, hey. You're not here to field the, uh, <laughs> you're here to block and. Take care of our return guy here. Yeah. Well, he has got good hands. He is the center, so all state offensive lineman. Yes. Here's McGavern handing off. Gatchet. A first down run. He's able to get it into Blue Valley territory. 12-yard run. Gatchett's had a big night tonight. He's over 100 yards. 148, I'm told. Ted, I, I can't read your writing, so... 108. All right. Well, okay. Yeah, I better put my glasses on when I'm reading this here. Yeah, well, that looks like, uh, well, I, I don't know. At a side angle, yeah, it looked like, I, I don't know, it looked like 148. Thank God we have the lights on. Up here. Yeah, let's not card, cause that controversy. It's not like we don't know any of the administrators at this high school. and we'll Get that fixed there. But see, you know, Jay Novacek is the principal here, but I always go to Megan Black. She, you know, because I did her games when she was a star basketball player at Olathe South. She, I think actually she just feels sorry for me, so she'll help me out. I saw her tonight earlier. Megan Grissel was her name back when she was a Falcon, you know, dominating the paint, scoring all kinds of points. But that's, that's who my go-to person is. But you got to meet Jay Novacek, Johnny, back the first time. Yeah. What would you think? Who do you think, uh, the Novacek brothers? What do, you, what do you think? You know, they both got nice beards. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm part of the beard gang. So, All right, yeah, uh, yeah. First thing you check out. Yeah, Johnny's beard tips. He, <laughs> he will always hit you with the beard tips. <laughs> Big grooming guy. There, There is Jay. See, I'm not yeah, lying. Yeah, he had a good beard there. The, Pat Butler also down there. Uh, the athletic director is uh, McGavern managing the game, running and then running and not running out of bounds, keeping the clock running, is father of Cooper Novacek, had an excellent season. The consensus is there's been a lot of Novaceks running around here tonight. I saw Charlie Novacek, the son of our producer. It's a heavy Novacek night. Cooper was our... See back, yeah. Coop's getting bigger. I'm, I mean, our, uh, Charlie's getting bigger. So... He is uh, growing up. There he is with the hoodie on by his uncle watching the game. He said he was definitely cheering for the Owls. Oh, just, the you know, you never know. Second just, charge, timeout in the second half. as we get a timeout. But this is a big uh, win for the uh, Olathe West squad. Is Now it looks like it's going to be Olathe Northwest, and that should be a packed ball game. As it's going to be played right here at Seaback. Yep, that is a final. Oh, it is a final. Okay, yep. Olathe Northwest will play Olathe West. And both teams uh, sit or see back their home uh, stadium. And it'll be a home game for Olathe West. They're the higher seed. They're the two seed. And now we're going to see what Olathe North and Blue Valley West, the one seed, it's scheduled for tomorrow. And, uh, Monsoon. Be ready. Yep. Yeah, they're saying, uh, I'm hearing all the meteorologists in town saying 100% chance of the storms tomorrow. So, Gavron running up the middle, powering 
inside the 30. They're going to try to rip the ball away from him, but I think he maintained possession as he flexes his bicep. Kind of cut off the run short to secure the football here with two hands as Blue Valley trying to rip it out as you should do. Look like the uh, guy trying to rip it out was Stroud, the uh, punter. 35-21 is uh, your final. Well, late the Northwest moving on in the playoffs. Uh, the running play. He's getting chippy here as players getting a little frustrated. Season not ready to end. Well, a couple of plays ago, there were a couple of the Blue Valley guys going at it on the field. Yeah, your season ends tonight if you're Blue Valley, maybe your career. But again, I recommend people keep an eye on Blue Valley. They've got a number of sophomores they're playing. Their sophomore class is strong, and I'm told the classes behind them, freshmen, eighth grade, seventh graders, very strong as well as McGavern separating. McGavern cutting it up, and he'll be inside the five. There's a flag down as McGavern ended up almost in the lap of our own Bethany Bowman who's here working for her uh, media company here, working the sideline. Flag down again for Kyle Summer to get some TV time. Face mask, defense, half the distance to the goal, results in a first down. Half the distance. Now the question is, do you score? I have a feeling uh, they will probably not score as you take a look at There it is. Just kind of a grab there by the uh, Blue Valley uh, defender. That was, uh, I think that was uh, Wombolt. Yeah, this is uh, good sportsmanship, and you may have to play these guys again. You don't want to stick it to them. By Punching one in, but I've seen other teams go ahead and keep on scoring, they say, and they don't care. But I think you want to avoid a fight breaking out on the field, so you just yeah. take the knee. And uh, Well, this guy had a big night, McGavron. Uh, 187 yards on the ground. Yeah, big Three night touchdowns. rushing. Then he threw one, too. To threw his, a touchdown to his brother. Yeah, so I think he's had a pretty solid night. Feeling he's uh, leaning into a uh, first team all conference quarterback potentially, but there's some other good quarterbacks in the league. You know, Hayden Jay of uh, Mill Valley, but all hugs on the sideline as Olathe West moving on in the 6A state playoffs. The two seed will advance and play on a game. Uh, I think it's scheduled for a Friday game. Next Friday night, the 11th, and they will move on to take on district rival Olathe Northwest right here at Seabeck. 42-20, your final, 8-2, Olathe West moving on in the playoffs. Olathe West celebrates a home win as the two seed advances past the seven seed, Blue Valley, 42-20, you know, it was 7 nothing Blue Valley, and then uh, Olathe West really got going. Their quarterback, McGavron, uh, hit his uh, little brother to tie the ball game, and they never really looked back after that. And McGavron had uh, three rushing touchdowns and over 150 yards, and uh, they quieted the critics, I guess, as they got the victory tonight, 42 to 20, and uh, the rushing game. Gatchet had a good night running the football. The offensive line, which is their most dominant position, with two All-Staters and four or five returning starters, as Pat Butler handing the trophy to T.J. O'Neill and the Owls. 
as they move on, as they win the regional game tonight on their home field. Once again, 42-20, but once again, uh, this team, high expectations. And they feel like they can get to the 6A state final, but they get past some very good teams still left in the bracket, including Olathe North, the number one seed. But tonight, the regional trophy is Olathe West, 42-20. They are victors at home at Seaback on a warm and windy Thursday night as they got this game in early with the pending weather coming up in the Kansas City uh, metro area coming up tomorrow. And Owls celebrating the win tonight. Blue Valley will finish their season five and five in this first ever meeting. They lose to Olathe West, but I caution you to remember Blue Valley has a lot of sophomores. Their ninth graders are good, their eighth graders, their seventh graders, they are gonna come back bigger, better than ever, and their young team are very strong. And so Blue Valley finishes at five and five, their season ends tonight. Owls eight and two, moving on to take on Olathe Northwest as we send it down to Leon. Hey, we're the head coach, C.J. O'Neill. Congratulations, you're advancing the quarterfinals. You got the trophy. You know, at halftime, we talked about this win being a factor. How important was it to get a three and out on defense to start that? It was huge. Our defense really played well all night, and really to get a stop there, and then for us to go down and score again was huge for us. Yeah, you guys took advantage. You got the ball back. You got a quarterback and run the football, and you got a a line that could block. How would you feel about your uh, running game tonight? Well, it was, I mean, it's what we expect of them. We have all seniors there, and including our tight ends, a senior, and they're experienced, and we lean on them every game. You know, last time we did a broadcast here with you guys, you lost. You haven't lost since. I think seven straight wins. What's? How, how have you improved over the season? Well, I think we just worried about us and continue to got, get better week by week, and, um, you know, we're playing well right now. Kind of a premature question, but you got Olathe Northwest, your rival, next week in the quarterfinals. Are you thinking about that yet? Not yet. We'll, we'll enjoy this one. But those those games against other Olathe teams, you know, especially Olathe Northwest, uh, so close to us, it'll be a fun atmosphere for, for both teams. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Congratulations. Enjoy this one with your team and family. Kevin, back to you. All right, thanks, Leon. Yeah, they were one and two after week three. We did the game with Gardner Edgerton. They were beat soundly 36 to 19, and you thought gloom and doom. And now they've rattled off seven straight and in the state quarterfinals. I want to say special thanks to all the folks at the Kansas State High School Activities Association, our school ADs, Gerald Van Reen of Blue Valley, Pat Butler of Olathe West. Thanks to our coaches, TJ O'Neill and Alan Terrell. Our producer, Joe Novacek. For Johnny Beck, Leon Liebel, and our entire Spectre Sports Broadcasting crew, this is Kevin White saying so long from CBAC. Our final once again, the Owls moving on in the 6A state playoffs. 42 to 20 is your final as we say goodnight from Windy Olathe.